I uh, have been working at Odorings for about 11 years and I buy a lot of the house plants in for all of our nine branches. So I'm very lucky to do that. Um, and then I work a lot with wholesale, sort of determining what they grow as well. So that's a bit about me. I love health and safety first. If we have to evacuate the building, we will exit out the store and we will follow me and we'll go to the car park to our evacuation point. If you need to use the loo, just head back out and it's your left, go your left out there. Um, yeah, shall we get cracking? So this is a beginner's class for houseplants. Um, so we're gonna go over repotting, that's one of our most common questions. Watering, very common question. Um, also, what sort of lights, like different things, and keeping your plant healthy and the pests away. So I thought I'd start repotting first, because that's our most popular question. Um, we've just got these cool um, propagation mixing trays in. I usually mix up my soil in buckets and make um, a complete mess, or I put it in the kitchen sink and my partner's like, ah, oh, you're making a mess. So these are amazing. Um, so we've got these extra large ones and we've got some small ones in the shop. You'll see a lot of plants around at the moment coming in to the shops, especially calatheas, in a high peat soil. So this is a calathea. And how the growers grow calatheas is they grow them in a high peat concentrate because they soil because they get them from their supplies overseas in these really um, tiny, these tiny seedlings. So they have to use that sort of peat concentrate to get them going um, at a quick rate so we can deliver you the plants. Um, they use that because it holds the moisture really well and in their nurseries they have, um, they don't water by hand they have big trays and they flood from the bottom. So all the um, peat takes up all the water. So we've seen a lot on social media, a lot of people will sort of um, comment that it's not a very good soil and then they'll start repotting their plants as soon as they get them. We highly recommend you don't do that. So that's that. So there's three types of soil because there's virtually three types of plants. So these hardy plants like your ficus and ferns, they require one type of soil. There's um, a second type of soil which requires a bit more drainage. That's typical for your philodendrons, like your satin, pothos, your devil's ivy and your calatheas. And then there's a sort of cacti succulent mix that we're going to make. So firstly, we're going to start by making um, sort of just a nice general potting mix. So you probably all would have brought a bag of potting mix. So this is absolutely amazing for plants that you're planting outside and like bedding plants, annuals, vegetables. It's got water retaining properties in it and it's got fertilizer. So this fertilizer will actually feed your plants for about three to six months. Um, so it's really good and that product does total replenish the fertilizer we put in it which we sell that's a long-term fertilizer and this is a mixture of like sand bark and actual soil so i've just poured a bit in there now if you're doing it's quite good this is a quite a good open space so i'm not going to wear a mask but if you are doing it in a enclosed shed wear a dust mask wear a dust mask always they're about 60 cents at the counter and always wear gloves um, and we gave you a pamphlet on legionnaire's disease so the the um, mask is to prevent legionnaire's disease 60 cents for health is pretty good so we've put it in here and whenever you're repotting your ferns or your ficus always start with them first so this is a nice, lovely soil. But we're actually going to add a coir block. Have any, has anyone used a coir block before? It is amazing. So it's only $3 for a block. 
everyone needs these. They're absolutely fabulous. So you unwrap it into a nine litre household bucket. You fill it halfway with water and in a, with lukewarm water. And in about half an hour, it's this beautiful sort of fibrous coir husk. It's beautiful. So it's very similar to peat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, whatever ratio you're making, you're gonna put about 30% of this beautiful stuff in here. If you've put too much water in your bucket, don't worry, you just drain it out. And when you are finished with, if you don't use it all, which you probably won't, um, you can just put it in a plastic bag or even just leave it in the bucket in the garage. And when you need to use it again, you can just um, hydrate it a little bit. It keeps really well, really good for hanging baskets at the bottom of root balls and plants. Just add a bit more. So we always have that in stock and you probably, it's not put in with the house plants, you'll probably find it in with um, a, our soil conditioning range or um, hanging our hanging basket range. With all the stagna moss and liners and stuff like that. So you just mix this up like a cake. And what this helps do is helps allow the baby roots to find their way through the soil. Because if you were to use just straight potting mix, the potting mix doesn't allow for air pockets in the soil, so it becomes compacted. And then your roots virtually don't grow. Which might be something you guys are experiencing with your houseplants at home. And if you can't be bothered making this, which some of you I know, don't have time. Kiwi Care has this amazing potting mix. It's got everything you need in it. That was designed in New Zealand as well to New Zealand conditions. This is really dusty, so this is perlite. So this helps drainage as well. So we'll just mix that through. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is always, this should always be your base soil mixture for every single plant you need to repot. And this is not for, this isn't for cuttings by the way, if anyone's wondering. So you can see, I might actually just come down and show you guys the ratio. So this is the ratio. Actually, I can't walk past because that's going to squeal at us. Um, so it's not a lot there, but we can have a look afterwards. You guys can see that. It's absolutely perfect for ferns and ficus. Okay, so also a lot of um, things we've noticed is um, overpotting. So what we mean by overpotting is some people will take this little plant and put it into a pot that size, which is not ideal because over, then you're going to have all this soil left in the pot and the water is just going to stay in the pot. Your plants aren't going to use the water when you're watering. So you actually only need to jump up to a little bit bigger. So squeeze your pot and always repot. Don't put your soil up higher, always repot it to the same level. Just give your roots a bit of a squeeze. Always make sure as well that your plant is well hydrated before you pot on. So just give it a little bit of a shake. We've got this amazing um, Alho pot range. Very high quality plastic, which we use. And Alho's really cool, I don't know if you guys know about them, but they actually run their factory off, um, they're in Europe, and they run their factory off a wind, wind farm. So they're very, um, very into the climate. Very easy, put a stake in it, and then you'd give that a light watering. Just 
ferns. Same with ferns, you don't want to overpot. So these, I don't know if you guys have had these, these lignum ferns. They are actually quite thirsty, one of the more thirstier ferns. So you just clean it up. As you can see, that's quite root bound. And if you ever are wondering why you when there's a good time to repot your house plant is about now, when it's warm, because you don't want to put your house plants into shock. And you see how easy I pull that out of the pot? That, that's when you know you need to repot your plant. Other indications are it might start yellowing, it hasn't been flowering, all the new growth um, is drooping or discoloured. Very easy. Do you have any questions about that first basic potting mix mixture? Oh, good. Right. Second, which is probably majority of what you guys will use. Um, so we're gonna repot the sad old satin pothos. These are coming in a few weeks, by the way, and we're growing them. If anyone's wondering. So this. We got in these the soil mixture. It's basically just peat and it's struggling because it doesn't have any drainage. So we're actually going to re put into the same pot, but we're going to increase the drainage factor. So we're just going to put a bit more perlite in there. So perlite's actually like a volcanic um, rock. It's natural. Looks like bean bags, balls, but it's really not. So it's quite dusty. So I always wear a dust mask. So this is, you can see we've increased the perlite quite a bit. You guys will see that. So you can use this for um, if you've got Hoyas at home, this mixture. A lot of people put pumice into their um, Hoyas, but I find the um, baby feeding sort of roots don't really get through because pumice is quite a lot thicker. So, yeah. Okay, so that's for the Saturn Pothos, um, Monstera, Fiddle leaf fig, calatheas, um, any of the really sort of popular plants. And the last type of plant we're going to do is the succulent and cacti mixes. So we've got this gorgeous Sansevieria here. So Sansevieria is um, are one of the plants that can sort of tolerate a lot of heat and sun and bright light. But they don't have, so succulents and cacti don't actually have really big root systems, so you need to give them a lot of drainage. So what roots they do have aren't sitting in, um, in water. So we've got our base mixture, and all you need to do is pour in your um, pumice. This is fine pumice, and we do a, we do a, um, larger grade pumice as well. That larger grade pumice is really good for um, if you're repotting outdoor succulents, if you're doing indoor. So I'll show you guys what it looks like. So you can see how evident the um, perlite and pumice are in there. It's a beautiful mixture. I'll um, hand around some little pots so you guys can see what it, how lovely the mixture is. And if you can't be bothered making the um, mixture, we've got, thank you Sasha, we have got a, um, we have got a cacti mix. It's in the shop. We've got a cacti mix, just a little cacti potting mix ready to go. Ready to go. 
So these little scents, that, oh, good if you're doing dividing out your string of pearls as well in China Hearts, I must say that. So I've seen a lot of, um, on social media at the moment, a lot of people are buying cuttings of string of pearls and they should really be going in pots this size and they're, a lot of, they're actually putting them um, directly into these. So what happens is the plant has too much water and it unfortunately dies because it's overwatered. So if you need to repot your sense of area, you just, you can use a knife if you're not comfortable ripping apart from the main plant, but these go into this beautiful potting mix as well. Does anyone want these little cuties? I've got three. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. Oh, should we do a little game then? Okay. First person to name one of the um, one of the products they poured into the soil. Oh my God! You guys are all at the same time. Um, we need to make it harder. Okay. What fertilizer do we use in our potting mix? Starts with t starts with T. Yes. Who said that first? Awesome. Cool. One for you. Don't squeal. There you go. Cool. So that is, that is, got all this beautiful soil. That's the, um, that's how we repot. Very easy. Very easy. So just remember, good soil to start with, you have to use a potting mix. You can't use straight coir, and, which is the coir block, and you can't use straight pumice because there's actually no fertiliser in there. So in your pots, that has three to six months of fertiliser, and then what you want to do after three to six months is you want to feed with total replenish, so I give this all to my large grade plants, like my big fiddle leaf fig and my big birds of paradise. I wouldn't use it on your little babies and stuff like that. And then I also use this because I'm a bit lazy. It is the pump and feed. It's a new product designed by a company in New Zealand for New Zealand conditions. It um, is a one to two week feed and it's a gel. So it just sits on the um, edge of your pot. So don't put it directly on your plant, put it on the edge of the pot, and when you are watering your plants, which we'll get into, um, it will slowly feed it. So we've had really good results with that. It's one of our best sellers. Does anyone have any questions about soil? Yes. What oh. in the bottle, please? This one, this is called um, Groshaw Pump and Feed. No worries. Sorry, I shouldn't expect you guys can like read from there. What was your question? No, because um, so the the lots of the phyllos and the satin pothos they actually don't have very big root systems. Hence why we have to put more perlite in the soil. So it wasn't root bound at all. The plant was struggling because it was in a really poor mix to start with. So that goes same with your calatheas and anything like that. Yeah. Cool. So we are going to get on to watering next. Do, who has a watering schedule at home when they water their plants? What do you do? Um, I do it once a week depending on whether it is dry to the touch at the top. Yeah, that's really good. And do you, so you wait for your plants to dry out? Mostly. Yeah. Except awesome. in summer when I give it a little bit more. Yes, that's perfect. Cool. So um, we get, um, Holly and I are on, and we, um, we actually answer all your questions on Instagram a lot. And Holly, who's over there, um, she does Facebook as well. So we get a lot of questions about watering the house plants and um, 
how to care for them. Um, we get pictures back of drooping leaves. We get pictures back of yellowing. Um, and a lot of it's actually got to do with watering. So the rule of thumb is you have to sort of let your plant dry out before you water it again. So it should you should just be able to go a few centimetres below the soil and if it's dry on that top layer, just give it a bit more water. In summer, if your house, everyone's house is different. Um, so I'm watering my house plants once a month, uh, once a week at the moment, because um, I'm in a new house, so they're quite warm. Um, if you're in a, like a beautiful old villa, I want, you'd probably want to maybe do it twice a week, um, but it's all about setting up that routine once a week, or once a fortnight. And um, in summer, try keep your plants in the same area in the house as well. So don't move them around and put them into shock. Um, so those are probably one of the best things to sort of do to sort of gauge your watering. Um, I've actually started using these. So they're houseplant order indicators. Well, that company I love that I keep talking about, KiwiCare. So they're a bit different from the typical watering indicators you can find. You can sort of hide them in the plant so you can't tell they're there. So it's blue at the, uh, yeah, so that has to be covered and you actually put it into the root ball of the plant because the root ball, do you guys know what a root ball is? I'll rip this out again. Sorry, Sansevieria. So a root ball is the main part of the plant. That uh, growing indicator will not work if you've got it on the edge of the plant. So don't be worried, just put it into the root ball of the plant and it will tell you when it needs watering. It'll be red, so that means water me. It's, so I think I have about five of these and we have a whole lot in the office. So they're, um, we've got a lot of plants in the office, lots of rare ones. Um, so yeah, they're amazing. So we highly recommend those. Um, I think they're about $7. They're quite good. They're quite good those. Um, so if you're ever wondering about watering, always send us a picture of your plant. When you're coming in, bring a picture of your plant and a picture of your space so we can sort of determine what it is. It, you could be watering it, you could get root rot underwatering and then your whole root ball is completely dried out so then you'll have to repot it. So it's quite, yes? How long does it last? Like, the, you know, if you're using it, do you use it for six months, 12 months, two months? This? Mm. Uh, the whole year. Okay. Yeah. 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 Use it for, it, especially in spring and summer when it's getting really hot. You could maybe put them away in the cupboard in winter when you're not doing a lot of watering. Yeah. So, has anyone got any questions on watering? No? Oh, good. All oh, right, feeding your house plants. Gina. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Hi. I was just wondering the um, impact of like heat pumps and heating systems. Sometimes the best free place for a plant is right by. So um, a lot of plants don't like draft, so you have to keep it out of your direct line of your heat pumps, um, or you can pick the hardier plants that l don't mind heat pumps. So if you want a hardy plant, always think office plants. So um, office plants are peace lilies, sensivarias, um, and ficus varieties. So if you find you're having trouble with a plant in your house, um, and it's in sort of a, in the direct flow of a um, heat pump. Get a hardy plant or move your plants. Um, I've got a heat pump in my living room where the most of my plants are and I haven't got it, I haven't got any plants in the direct um, flow apart from a succulent bowl and that seems to be doing fine. Um, but house plants don't mind heat pump um, air, if we want to call it air, yeah. Any more questions on watering? Um, 
Some people say, especially like um, your Venus flytraps, they'll say to use uh, rainwater or filtered water. Um, I've used both on my house plants. If your house plants are strong and healthy and beautiful soil and you're feeding them regularly, you should be able to use chlor you should be chlorinated tap water is fine. Um, maybe just try not having it so cold. You could just add a little bit of warm water in it um, so they don't go into shock perhaps because they're sitting in a warm home and then you hit them with like a cold icy water. You could try that. Yeah, I haven't had any trouble. Um, what about like watering from the top or watering from the bottom and leaving them in pools of water? Like, how does that work? So leaving plants in pools of water can encourage um, pests and they don't like sitting in water. So it's good to... There's two types of pots we carry. So I'm talking about decorative pots now. So we have a pot which has no drainage holes in it. This is always called a cover pot or a drop pot because it covers that pot and you drop your plant in. So when you're watering, you have to remove it from that pot and then put it in the sink or whichever method, wherever if you're doing it in the shower or whatever. It, so water it and then it all has to sort of run out um, with water. When it's fully drained, pop it back in. And then we also have these other beautiful pots. They're a ceramic finish with a saucer and they've got drainage hole. So you can water them, but you still want to make sure they're not sitting in water. The only plant you want sitting in water is a Venus flytrap, usually. So always have free draining. Um, a lot of people um, ask the question as well, can I direct plant into this? Probably not, um, because your plants need drainage, the water needs to go somewhere. Um, the only sort of plant you could direct pot into would be like a cactus bowl or something like that. So it's got that beautiful um, soil in it. Someone else had a question, yep. Um, begonias are quite, um, especially the rex types, are quite um, picky. So we grew a whole lot and we found the shops that didn't have good airflow, even though they were getting watered adequately, they sort of just didn't like life. So we've actually stopped growing them. Um, they are a harder plant to sort of look after. Um, maybe you could try, have you moved it around the house a bit? Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe um, don't put it in a draft, but is there somewhere um, in your dining room where you always have a cracked window or something, just so it gets a little bit of air movement around it? Because mould is created by humidity and water, yeah. And you're not, you're not watering the leaves, you're just watering the surface, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would try, I would try um, moving it and possibly putting it in a um, high perlite mix, which we spoke about. I'd try that. Yeah. One last question. Misting. Um, so misting, if you're going to mist, people say mist calatheas. Um, I don't recommend it. If your house is warm enough, your calathea should be fine. Um, but you can mist your palms. They seem to not mind a mist, and obviously your ear plants as well. They need a misting. But we don't recommend watering the leaves, and we don't recommend misting plants usually as well. What plants are you misting? I'm not misting any. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has um, their own opinion. We don't mist yeah. at all. So, and we try not to touch the leaves as well when we're watering. Um, also, when you're watering, water in the morning. So your plant has all day to take up the um, water. Plants go to sleep a lot of the time. A lot of plants sleep at night time, so don't water in the night. And don't take your plants out in the full sun because it's a sunny day and get the hose on them and watering, water them. They um, don't particularly like that either. So morning watering is best. 
So Saturday morning. All oh, right, feeding. Do you know? Made in here? Made in here. Do you mist? Um, I don't recommend misting them. If you've got a really good soil and you're watering them properly, they should be fine. Yeah, some people recommend them in the bathrooms because of the condensation, but um, a lot of the new bathrooms don't really have condensation, so is yours thriving with being misted? It was an indoor plant, and now it's an outdoor plant, so it's getting today's mist, yeah. and it's happy. It's yeah, happy some outside. maiden hairs um, go outside. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, okay, so two of the best fertilizers. Total replenish. So this is a granulated um, fertilizer. This is about twelve twelve ninety nine, and it lasts three to six months in your pot. When you are using it, you just um, side dress your pot, and there's a little scooper in there, so it knows exact you know exactly how much you need. So you side dress the pot with the fertilizer. So you can do that twice a year with your um, plants. You can't put the fertilizer directly, you can't put granule fertilizer directly on a stem because it can burn your plant and that can cause yellowing um, and it's actually quite hard for your plant to sort of come back from that. Um, you can actually use this on all outdoor product as well. It's really high in nitrogen. So nitrogen is what makes your plants lush and green basically. And it's really high in the flowering property. So if you're maybe struggling to get your anthuriums, your, you know, the red flowering anthuriums or your peace lilies to flower, you could try some total replenish because it's very high in the flowering property. Um, just remember when your house plants are in pots, the whatever fertilizer is in the soil or what you've top dressed the soil with, it's constantly flowing out the drainage holes of the pot. So if you're constantly watering, you'll want to do this every three months instead of um, twice a year. Um, so always use that. And then in conjunction with that, um, I will use the houseplant pump and feed from Kiwi Care. This is the gel. So I'll pop that on. I actually only use it once a month, but you can, if you really want to get your plant cranking, do it um, twice twice a month and it's just this gel again put it on the side of the plant and it will slowly feed it so this has been designed for um, New Zealand conditions this is a great product the importance of fertilizing is if you don't fertilize your plants um, they'll become quite weak so it's like us taking vitamins to Sort of combat colds and keeping healthy so the more often you're fertilizing the less bugs that will come so um scariad fly mealy bug mites scale and aphids so if you keep your feeding regular you should have a healthy strong plant Sorry, you twice yeah yeah what plants are you going to use it on yeah Yes, I love it. I love it. Oh, yet. Well, we're pretty, we're pretty bulging out there, so we just got a big influx of plants because it's summer. It's houseplant time. Um, also, there's this mist and feed. Um, so, in the morning when there's no um, light, this will, this has got a um, light feed in it, so you can just. Missed your peace lilies for a, um, for a food. On the back, it says not to use it on silver plants. So you can't use it on your um, fish hooks. You can't use it on your silver swords and anything like that. So it's really good for like peace lilies and stuff like that as well. Do we have any questions about fertilizing? Yes. Oh, sorry, what was that? Oh, there is actually specific African violet food, um, or you could use this is really good as well because it's got a um, it's got a flowering property in it. Have you got any normal nitrogen-based fertilizer at home? Oh, seaweed. So seaweed's a really nice tonic. It's like um, 
it hasn't actually got any fertilizer in it, but I love seaweed because it builds up the immunity of your houseplant. Um, it's very good stuff. I use it everywhere in the garden. If you don't have seaweed, you need seaweed. It actually prevents houseplant replanting shock. Um, so when you're replanting, you can pour a whole lot of seaweed around and then maybe just leave them in when your garage is warm. Leave them in the garage for a bit because seaweed is a, it's a bit pongy. So what you could use, you could use that and see how it goes. And if it's not flowering, just come get some liquid potash from us. And potash is what helps things flower. Okay. And repot it probably. Repot it in that first soil base mix we made. That will help a lot. Yeah. Any other questions about fertilizer? Yes. I'm so, I can't hear. What did you say? Oh, really? So they should be flowering at this time of year. When's the last time you repotted them and how old are they? Two months ago. Okay, give it some time. And what potting mix did you use? Did um, um, you could just get some of this. See how it goes. Boost it up. You got the spray? See how it goes, because ours are starting... Actually, they were, ours are in a glass house, so it's a bit different. Ours started flowering about two months ago, but they, they're still going. Um, so try the houseplant food and keep up the watering. If you're not watering your houseplants enough, they won't flower as well. Once a week, good. And then if that fails, liquid potash. That is your saviour. Yeah. Any other questions about fertiliser? Yeah. Yeah, so you can't use it on little wee ones, so your little baby house plants. Um, these ones are all fine, but I wouldn't use it on. I wouldn't use it on your little baby house plants, or if you see how that. Obviously, string of pearls as well take up the whole surface of the pot. You would never use it on that because it will burn. So. If this pot was filler with plants, you wouldn't be able to use that, but you could put a little bit in there. Yep. If you're ever in doubt, just give us a call or send us a picture on Instagram or Facebook and we can help you out with that so you can get it right. It's a lot of trial and error as well. Um, so sometimes it takes a whole season to sort of master your watering and your feeding and keeping your bugs at bay. So. Don't worry if you don't have it all down pat at the moment. Any other questions about feeding? All good? Okay, um, our last subject is lighting and heat. Um, and then after that, um, what we can do is we can go into the shop and we can have a look at houseplants and if you have any other questions, we can answer them in there, a bit more intimate so we're not, I'm not yelling at you guys over a speaker. Um, there's lots of the product in the store that we spoke about as well. So the tickets that you have on your phone that you were emailed with the number, um, we have your physical tickets and if you want to buy anything in the shop you can use your ticket to, um, the, to redeem so you'll get $10 off whatever you buy. Um, and then everyone else that has their tickets, that's great. So what we'll do is we'll leave the tickets at the counter and then just grab your phone and we'll match up your ticket number. All good? Okay. Lighting and heat. Um, three types of light. There's low light. So that is like a, maybe a dark, dingy bathroom. There is um, moderate to medium light and then there is bright light. So rule of thumb. Houseplants do not like the sun's beams on their leaves. That will cause burning, um, especially when you're watering them, because what happens when you're watering them is your plant takes up all the liquid, and if the sun beams go on the plants, some of you might have seen some brown dots all over your leaves or tipping. That's because of the sunlight. So plants do not like sunlight, sunbeams on them with the exception of, um, keep going back to Venus flytraps, Venus flytraps love the windowsill sitting in a saucer with sunlight on them. So they're sort of the only plants that like sunlight. Um, 
bright filtered light. So I would call this a medium light. Most people have this in their house, but bright filtered light is the sort of light that you'll have next to your French doors in your house or bright light on your dining table. So if you have a lot of houseplants, I'd highly invest in some, um, not net curtains, but nets, like some sheer curtains or some sunscreen shades, if you're obsessed with houseplants like I am. Um, we just built the house and I designed areas around the house for certain plants. <laughs> Um, and the kitchen, so I'm going to put all these floating shelves in and stuff, so yeah. So I would highly recommend you invest in some sunscreen shades and stuff like that. The plants that like, that can tolerate really bright light are succulents, um, Sansevieria, um, think office plants, so um, ficus and dracaenas. Um, Diffenbachias, they're beautiful, they're so underrated, they're a beautiful variegated plant. Birds of paradise love bright light because um, they're very tropical and also syngoniums and zanzibars. So they all love bright light. Um, the second lot of plants is moderate light. So this is, most people have moderate light in their house so you can get away with peace lilies. Um, the philodendrons, this brand new Calusia. Has anyone got one of these, by the way? Oh, you need one. They're new to, the, they're new to New Zealand, actually. New to the market. They're so beautiful. There's a little, um, if you go onto our Instagram page, there's a little um, story about them to give you some information. Um, Saturn Pothos, Philodendron Cordatum, they were like moderate light. Calatheas, like moderate light. Um, and then there are ferns, so some ferns will tolerate um, moderate light, but they also will tolerate shade as well. So shade is something like under this table, so you can get away with like ivies, ficus pamillas, um, which come in this beautiful tangly plant. Originally, they were sort of grown outside to stick on a fence, but you can sort of grow them as a rambling plant in your house, so they like really low light. Um, Dracaenas also like really low light. Um, most ferns, um, there's not a lot that like a lot of low light. Some palms, you can get away with low light as well, so um, your little kentias, they, we have some beautiful little kentias in the shop as well. So those are some good options for low light. Uh, African violets like low light, if you enter something flowering. And then your peace lilies like low light as well, but you won't get flowering. So these have, you'll see these are yellowing now. We've moved these into bright light so we can try and get some flower on them. And then once they get flower on them, we'll move them into a shady spot as well. Um, Africa, the, the bridal veils like low light as well. Um, so yeah. Those are some really good options of low light plants. Does anyone have any questions about lighting in your house? Oh good. Any other questions I haven't answered before we go into the shop? Oh nice, yeah. Yeah. Did you cut it back a bit? No. I would cut it back a bit because um, ferns, you'll see. Um, how old is it as well? Oh, yeah. It might have gone into a little shock. So some plants go into a bit of shock when they move into a new house. Cause they're quite sensitive things, but they adapt, they adapt quite well. So I'd cut it back because you can see ferns um, have all the new growth from the, um, the crown there. I'd cut it back a bit, maybe give it some food and it's growing season so it should so shoot out a whole lot of lovely new, new growth. No, that shouldn't, no, shouldn't at all. Any other questions about, yeah? Pest, oh my gosh, thank you for reminding me. Pests, pests, 
pests, pests. So the worst pest to get is mealybug. Mealybug is this horrible, fluffy critter that lives originally in your soil. So it goes dormant in winter. So you can't actually tell you've got it a lot of the time in winter. In summer, it comes up and it looks like fluffy, fluffy little cotton ball things all over your plants. And you have to look for it a lot of the time quite closely. So it will live under the um, spine of your leaf and it will also hide in the crown of your plants. And if you've got any uncurling plants like um, calatheas that they uncurl, like little rolled up pieces of paper, they can live down there as well. Um, so mealybug is very hard to get rid of and um, there's actually uh, not a lot of things on the market that can get rid of mealybug now because um, we've removed all the toxic sprays, which is very good. So we've removed all the toxic sprays from um, the industry, but what you can do on your less sensitive plants is you can get, meth what we do is we get methylated spirits and then we dab, we kill them with a cotton bud and dab it. You can't do it on silver plants, by the way. You can't use methylated spirits on silver plants. But just um, what you can do is just keep your plants healthy for the mealybug. Um, so we just dab the evident ones on the plant with methylated spirits. We also use the um, Groshaw Houseplant Insect Control. This is completely organic, by the way. Um, and then what you can do is you can sprinkle around neem granules on the top of your surface as well. Um, if you've got, it's a bit smelly. Um, it's an interesting smell, I can't describe it, but if you've got a houseplant on your side table where you sit down on your sofa, I wouldn't use it because it can be a little bit potent. Amazing, amazing stuff. So you can start neem tree granules, granules, and then you can use an insect control spray from Kiwi Care. This is natural and Obviously, again, only use it uh, when there's no sun around, so in the morning or at night time. So mealybug is a really bad one. Has anyone had mealybug before or have mealybug? How do you combat it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't put spirits Yeah. It sort of cleans up the plant a bit. There's lots of um, sprays, commercial sprays we use out the back so your plants don't get mealybugs that bug on them, but they're quite hard because they live in the soil and you might get your plant, it might be in your house for a month and it will just appear. It's, it's one of the nastiest things to get. You might notice as well, scaried fly or fungus gnats. So that's quite evident because you can just walk past a plant and just go like that and they'll fly out. Neem granules will kill them instantly. So neem granules is natural. It's bark from a tree and it is a deterrent. So you can actually use this in your veggie garden, in your bedding, um, in your, when you're planting your annual. So it's not just for house plants. Use this everywhere in your house. Um, mites. Keep your plants healthy. So it's the watering and the feeding, but the insect control will get rid of your mites. Aphids, again, watering, keeping your plant healthy in really good soil. Um, some people wipe them off or wash them off, or you can use this as well. Um, scale, so scale look like little turtle, the shell of a turtle, but tiny on the bottom of your leaf a lot of the time. So you can spray them with this, but you might still have this scale shell left on your plant so you just have to scrape it off but it should be dead underneath is there any other bugs anyone's experienced those are the most common ones on house plants so mealybugs mites aphids and scale and fungus gnats yeah so it's all about keeping them healthy watered and fertilized so hopefully you don't actually have to use this um, but these are your friends you should always have these I've always got these under the kitchen sink. So neem tree granules and insect control. Yeah. Any questions? Um, 
So, how am I going to say this diplomatically? Um, you know, on the back of labels where it says, or on the, everyone's got their own, um, obviously, opinion and process on um, houseplants. A lot of houseplants on the market are actually from, like, tropical rainforests and um, high humidity places. So you'll see in, um, in the islands the um, philodendrons growing all up the trees and vining everywhere. Um, you can try misting, um, but you just run into that risk of um, fungus and your leaves burning and stuff like that. So, so you can you can try misting. You could do a trial and error. Um, I don't recommend it. You can buy humidifiers as well that put, um, you just buy those offline, we don't stop them. Um, and yeah, I just don't, yeah, always ask a staff member in a garden center about misting and Yeah. 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 I guess that just goes back to um, everyone's opinion. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's essential in health plant care. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good. Shall we head over to the store and have a look, and we can do any other answer any other questions.